Ooh, I wonder what could be going on here then. Oh, I don't know if it's going to load because it's just gone silent. Uh, anyway, this is the first side of the first copy, the least shit looking copy of two that I'm trying there. It didn't work. Yeah, like an idiot, I didn't notice that it said uh, read error 8. I was just listening for the sounds, which sounded okay, but anyway, we'll see what happens with this. Well, apparently there is uh, at least one game that's got loading music on the Amstrad. I didn't know you could do that, but uh, I suppose that just means all the other loading routines for the game is a really shit, because technically it was possible. Now, as I understand it, when you type load, uh, crap goes into a specific address and then runs. So you could actually uh, put a turbo loader at the start with, you know, loading music and everything. I don't know. Seems a bit weird. Abstract CPC may possibly have the same total number of games with loading music and a title page as the VIG-20. Which is one more than uh, all the Atari 8-bit computers for which turbo loaders were impossible. So, I don't... Well, this definitely wasn't the first game we played on my mate's Amstrad when he got it. Uh, that would be Sorcery. Because that's the reason why he bought the Amstrad. He's getting fed up looking for a C64 in stock. I think it was summer 1985. I don't think it was summer 84. Uh, but then I... Well, no, actually it wouldn't be summer 85. Because I don't... Basically, I don't know how long he'd owned it before he accidentally blew it up. You know, which we didn't know. It was just the internal fuse at the time. But uh, anyway... <coughs> Well, whenever Sorcery came out on tape for the uh, Amstrad, and uh, he got an Amstrad, but he also got the, uh, you know, the bonus games pack that he got with the early ones. Things like Old Mummy and all that. So I don't actually know the order in which we tried the game. So let's have a look at the old Cavarunio of Old Mummy. I mean, it looks quite interesting. I quite like it. And you won't be able to see fuck all because... It's a north facing window, mate. Yeah, you won't be able to see shit, basically. Not with this camera, anyway. So, it's actually quite a nice uh, bit of cover artwork. I do quite like it. I don't know what the uh, Spectrum version looks like. Uh, famously, Mad Commodore, that genius on YouTube, which is me, I'm not hiding, uh, with the dead channel. Dead enough. I uh, did say he was going to do O oh Mummy. No, he, he would like to do O oh Mummy for the victory. What are you doing there, buddy? No! I can't even remember what this is for. Oh, this is a wire for the uh, tuner, the radio tuner, uh, to control the other Pioneer Hi Fi. Pioneer Hi-Fi you've just seen is the Pioneer Hi-Fi I bought in 1988 and it's uh, a little bit unwell. Uh, definitely needs new belts for the tape decks because uh, they don't do nothing. Um, they work for about half a second. Um, yes! Is this max volume? It is as well. So anyway, the uh, Amstrad is next to the Hi-Fi and uh, the Amiga is next to the Hi-Fi and if I was playing C64 the uh, cables would reach from next to the Amiga so, so I don't know exactly if, you know if this was like the second, third, fourth game yeah because it basically goes on the covers we might have tried carrier attack first but yeah, not Honestly, who knows? Who knows where my bloody glasses are? There you go. Can you actually see bugger all? Well, actually, you can see quite a lot. Nice one, mate. 
Nice one with your small screen, buddy. We've managed to get a C64 and Amstrad and an Eagle 1000 uh, and uh, well potentially a C64 as well because it would use the same monitor as the Amiga. Buddy, stop nicking this bloody uh, wire, it's like a, a mono, mono audio cable. You know, with mini phono plugs on both ends. Mini Jack, sorry. Yeah, that was a way. Oh no, that's him. That's very bad. It's a very interesting game. So I It's not quite Amidar because you have to like reveal treasures as well. So on Amidar you have to do the whole thing. Like if you get the key early enough, you, like now, you can just exit, see? So it's not quite Amidar. But it's uh, yeah, very similar. And I imagine this uh, running through my Pioneer High Club. Anyway, some of the buttons don't work on the Pioneer Hi-Fi. Most notably, the, mid, the most middle button of the uh, graphic, graphic equaliser, uh, the up increase button works, but not the decrease. So I've turned it off now, because uh, it's like, ah, that's just crap. If you put up the mid-range, uh, just only do that if you want a, a cheap, see I had to do all the uh, things there to get the key, that's what I was talking about, but uh, yeah if you uh, put your mid range up, it's going to sound uh, a bit like an internal speaker on the Amstrad, so there's no point in it, but then everything will sound like it. But, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, it just changes colour even if they're empty. So you're basically unlocking the tombs, I think, unearthing, whatever. Uh, he's stuck in the corner there, so all right, um, go for the high school map, Commodore. And uh, not really, I'm, I'm actually going for the number of levels, but I don't think things really change. So, but this is definitely doable on uh, a big 20. The graphics will be obviously much more chunky. This is clearly in mode one, so uh, you're getting 320 by 200 in four colours. The so Vic 20 can't even do 320 by 200, mate. That's uh, on the C64 you can do that. So. Yeah, I'm surprised there's no version of this for the old uh, C64 Runeo. Really need to get out of that sort of area. So there's quite a lot of enemies on the screen now. But I like this game. I'm glad it loads. I'm really glad. So, oh, one of the things you pick up is like a temporary power up, where you can, uh, oh, where you can like kill one of them. Key. Is it going to be in the last one again? It's not. So, what's going on here? Where's my key? Oh, I've missed that bit there as well. So, yeah, what bastard? It was literally the last one I did. So, I think you used to make them uh, chase you all the way around the edge first, which obviously is not going to work there. Then at least you've done all of them, so then it's just a matter of avoiding action. So like, yeah. Yeah. 
You could chase one of them, but because there's so many mummies on the screen. He's got like the uh, school feet now. Oh, God damn it. It's difficult to see if you've actually done every single thing. Yeah. Just want the key now. We're going for the uh, you know new sheets. Uh, Daryl sheets. What a crap name! My surname was Sheets. Oh look! Does that mean it's uh, back to level one? It is, so, ooh, ooh, one shot long play. But it's a nice game, don't, you know. Someone should really have gone back and updated this game, because, you know. I'd rather play this than Amidar, so. People say Pac-Man is an iconic game and uh, it's just as uh, short-lived uh, amounts of variety as uh, this game. So Technically, you could say this is as good as Pac-Man, if you were me. But uh, you're not me, obviously, so... Yeah, this is for the points now. I'm not paying attention to it. The old zipstick game a bit funny now. I basically with a Vic 20 verse. Now I found a routine where I could play the music under interrupt and it is just enough uh, of a you know routine without making any modifications to actually do this music on it. I reckon you could do this music on the Vic 20. There's only two channels. There's like a, a lower range frequency and a mid range one for the tune and a higher range frequency for the uh, sound effect. So, so that's the thing with this, so you know, I could have left the screen and I'm doing all the blocks now to get extra money, uh, extra points, not money. Uh, well, actually, I think it is money. Uh, which uh, opens uh, you up to, you know, the risk of releasing even more mummies. Which on levels like this is already too much. Too much! Not enough. Right. Mm. Now, the mummies seem to change direction. Uh, just like, you know, that. There is like a random element, so if it was like Amidar and they tracked you all the way, it'd be more difficult. Right, okay. So like I say, sometimes it is a bit difficult to see exactly which ones you've got, sort of thing. So. Ah, no, I see. Ooh. So they don't actually uh, trap you 100%. So. That was a zipstick. This is not the uh, brand new condition zipstick for uh, new faithful. That's in the upper room. So. Uh, I don't know if I'll put another computer next to the C64 in the upper room. I could do. Um, new faithful will be going in here probably. Uh, although, I, I don't know, the reason I say that is because the uh, Sony TV here, uh, it's only got RF input, it's got two RF inputs and an input selection button on the front, which is great for ColecoVision and, uh, you know, Atari at the same time or something like that, or even Atari 400, because there's no monitor port on there. So he actually, did I just lose a life there? So it's very tricky to actually see that you've missed a bit and it's not obvious which bit you've actually missed. So, 
But I think it's a brilliant game. Very simple game. You know, so it doesn't actually reset you to the top of the screen, which is a bit of a problem, especially with this bloody joystick, see? You think you're gonna go on forever and then uh <laughs> So oh, yeah, I mean, you'd have to do it in machine code on the VIC-20. I've never written that sort of machine code. Certain things I don't know how to do in machine code yet. But uh, that was our mummy. I hope you enjoyed my uh, Amstrad content. Flickery as it is. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, when you're dancing to this tune, which you definitely would be back in 1984, whatever it's His old mummy, of course. Oh, yeah. See if it says the date there. Yeah, no. Um. You have to be dancing like uh, they're dancing at a party. Hey! Why you got a mess with the door? Nice behind yeah? here, don't be an arsehole. Well, I found a use for my uh, 48 inch LCD TV that's fucked. Uh, see, it's getting difficult to tell the ginger cats apart now. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, I will say this. They'll be dancing like they're dancing at the party in Teen Wolf. Now, I'm glad we've got this uh, out of the way now. I'm going to have to go and uh, make sure the cats are... Uh... <sighs> I can't duck you the two. Mode one or mode two. You can't pay me if I do. See? Read ever A, B, C, oh, we've got flashing lights, and this is the uh, other side. Well, I don't like what's it's anymore, but I probably would have eaten what's it's back then. But we've got Cheetos and uh, this shit, but uh, I only had Diet Coke. Diet Coke was for women, which is why they invented Coke Zero, which looks almost identical to regular Coke. Because uh, it was affecting their sales and they left uh, Diet Coke in the silver can for the ladies. You see, I bet you didn't know that, eh? What Patreon prick will tell you that? Well, I don't know. Like it. it does sound a bit ropey to me. Like the tape. It does sound a little bit warbly. All the title pages in. Uh, is it mode 0 or mode 2? Always get confused about that. But yeah, I mean, uh, once we uh, sort something out with the cats, uh, I don't 
I have a bit more room in here. There's actually another monitor on here. I did uh, toy with the idea of having two Amiga 1000s up and running. But I was like, what's the point? No one's allowed around here, innit? Stay away! You bloody diseased humans. Now, speaking of disease, I did check out monkeypox. <laughs> and it's exactly what I said in another video. It's like, what we need is except for the fact that it's nowhere near as contagious as uh, COVID but other than that monkeypox is uh, transmitted by touch and by you know breathing in other people's fucking disease there and by touch I mean if someone coughs on a can of coke and then you fucking touch it even if you don't drink it and then stick your fingers in your mouth whatever touch you wise you fuck uh, but also, it's sexually transmitted. So, hey, where's the rest of the game? This is not good. There's a lot of tape on there, though. It just doesn't sound to me like it's actually loaded. I've probably seen Can the 2 and probably 1 on the Amstrad. However, I can't remember what they look like or what the game is like. So yeah, it's a bit disappointing about the uh, buttons on the graphics not working. The two lower end buttons, they don't work properly, not up and down. Uh, the two top end buttons, you can increase them, but you can't put them down. But I'm not too bothered about that. So I used, used to have it relatively high. So seeing as I have to uh, open it up and uh, sort something out with the buttons, which means I have to sort something out with getting some uh, isopropyl alcohol tape head cleaner to you. Okay, go and see what my little bloody cats are doing. This is a long loader, this is. Who knew 64K could take so long to load? Well, come out, buddy. Okay. Annoyingly, I haven't found my two SNES minis, so I've got absolutely nothing to play on the plasma. That's the only console I need a plasma for. I do have a real SNES, but to be honest, I'm not that interested in uh, checking out the SNES because I haven't got like one of them uh, flash cards. I need to get something like that. And eBay keep removing the auctions for the uh, Chinese knockoffs for like, you know, 20 quid. I'm not paying 60, 70 quid for a fucking uh, actual EverDrive, whatever. Bollocks, mate. That's what the Chinese are there for, mate. They make uh, cheap copies of uh, stuff you want. I don't know why I'm loading this game. I should have loaded something else. Let's go and see what else we found, eh? Oh, I did actually find Gauntlet 1. So I found that. Uh, got a copy of Buggy Boy here. Well, I mean, I have got, I'd say, a small collection of Amstrad games rather than uh, a pathetic collection. We've got Sultan's Maze, we've got Bridget, Roland on the Ropes, we've got three copies of. Uh, Target Renegade. Renegade 3. New York Kung Fu, Live and Let Die. I did say Buggy Boy already, but I can't see it. Oh, there it is, right. Uh, leaderboard. 
Ghostbusters Ball Blazer. I've got Rescue and Fractor this as well. I don't have Star Reapers 2. I don't have Ikari Warriors. There's a few Amstrad action things going on. Hopping Mag, which I think I played on the C64. I've got Scalex Trick. Uh, Animal Vegetable Mineral. I've got Xanagrams as well somewhere. So I seem to remember having that. I've got Pulsoids. Jaws. Rogue Trooper. Ghost Hunters. Super Stuntman. Chucky Egg. I've got Chucky Egg. Two Dizzy games which I never load. Oh, I've got the uh, UK and the US version of Aliens. I don't like either really. So yeah, I should really separate out all the Amstrad action things and see what's on them. But I ain't got the actual reading stroke tobacco card. Oh, glad you're loading. is mode 1 with a raster split for a mode 2 fucking this is horrible what is this piece of shit it's like a fucking game and watch what the fuck I'm talking about the move I haven't even got to the graphics comments yet so they put it into mode 2 here but it's still as far as I can just count the colours white, yellow, blue black yeah, it's still four cut white. Why would you do that? The whole fucking thing should be in this chunky mode. Ah, you know, fuck you, I don't want to play this shit. That's uh, wear and tear on my tape head so I'll never get back in it. Bloody hell. I have to be careful with the old uh, thing there. What's going on here? That is actually the top of the screen. That was uh, account flickery fuckula. I don't really care about how flickery it is on the camera. There's not much I can do about the flickeriness because there's no separate contrast and brightness control on the Amstrad. It's a real chumps machine as far as the design goes. really have a reset switch as well. So this is Buffy Boy. Well it might be. Might just be uh, a fucked up tape with nothing on it. I have had that before. Blank tapes. There's a lot of leader on the tape. The leader of the pack so yeah, this is the uh, encore release of uh, Buggy Boy. Two ninety nine apparently. This was What's that gold medal winner. Why you would have that on the Amstrad cover, I don't know. There's quite a lot of tape on this one too. Amstrad games take forever to fucking. Work. Let's go and see what Amiga's doing. All right, mate. You're not sticking your tongue out at me, huh? Let's check your fur. How's the fur going, huh? Oh, it's taking longer than when you was a kitten, huh? Amy's a middle-aged lady. What's this idiot doing? Just stopped his car, he's checking out the uh, it's a Vauxhall insignia. Oh, he's just checking his tyres. The Mazda CX-5 looks quite nice, but uh, we won't be changing the car. We won't be taking the car to the garage like a lazy bastard for them to fix things. We're going to have to fix them myself. But the amount of things I have to fix is just ramping up. I must admit I'm getting pissed off with that. You fix one thing and then you find two things that need fixing. It's like, piss off. It's not good, mate. Bit of a shit show, if I'm honest. Bit like the uh, parking ticket I got. 
for uh, taking my cat to the vet. Really, it's a bit of a weird angle, so it's up here, so although now I'm not going to know if he's lined up. Loading screen, madam. So yeah, we've uh, we've had to do a bit of a design improvement here because I don't know if you can see that. There you go. See, we had to put a cartridge there because otherwise if you uh, accidentally push the CPC too far it will turn the uh, on off switch on or off so uh, again like I said the design of the Astra is a bit of a chumps uh, it's real fucking barra boy shit as you'd expect from a barra boy like uh, Alan Sugar I'm not calling him Lord we're talking about 1983 Alan Sugar here mate I wonder if there was a, a different design for the original Amstrad prototype that they were thinking of. The one that had the 6502 processor. Not that it would have made that much difference. Yeah, I think 2 megahertz is the limit for the uh, 6502. And I believe the Amstrad is 4 megahertz Z80. So that's about the same. Pretty much up and down kind of instructions you'll be running on a game engine they take uh, twice the number of clock cycles on the Z80 and the 6502 Z80 obviously being another rip off of the uh, expensive Motorola 6800 uh, it's just not as good a rip off as the uh, 6502 in terms of like instructions executed per clock cycle on average and there you go but they were both dirt cheap compared to the 6800 written by Andy Williams graphics by Peter Tattersall yes uh, it's a shit loading screen I thought the Amstrad version had a proper loading screen Anyway, I've never played this on real hardware. And, uh, what are we going to do, mate, eh? Now, this isn't the actual tuner that I had with my Hi-Fi when I bought it in 1988. It's an identical one that come with the other Hi-Fi. I haven't found the tuner, but I was like, right, the Hi-Fi needs to come out and it needs to be unpacked possibly aired out a bit but like I say it's off at the moment because uh, whilst testing the buttons uh, the mid-range the absolute mid-range is a uh, seven band uh, graphic equalizer and spectrum analyzer twin spectrum analyzer but you can only set the graphic equalizers for both channels at the same time it, there's no individual left and right graphics which actually, if you think about it, how often are you going to do That's a bit of a gimmick. That's what the other one does. Uh, but, yeah, I prefer the old... Uh, basically, I like Spectrum Analyzer. There we go, there we go. That's a nice loading screen, I like that. This is going well. Why well, couldn't get Dex to work this fucking well? But I'm not complaining. Uh, I can always, uh, you know, do something, get a blank tape, record it, you know, with uh, the CDT image turned into a WAV file and uh, load it in. Just, yeah. It might be possible to uh, start recording on the original tape like uh, about at the very beginning of the tape and then uh, it will f potentially finish loading before the tape damage area comes in which is like right near where it loads at the end because the bastard didn't rewind the tape but you know when the hi fi's working and uh, I can actually like play tapes on there and check them out but 
Oh, the other thing is like a knob, I left the uh, fucking batteries in the remote, packed it away seven and a half years ago. And when I opened it, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Luckily, only one of the terminals were a bit corroded and it wasn't the spring one. So we just scratched it a bit, a bit of white vinegar, a bit of scratching with the old, uh, you know, craft knife, skill knife, box cutter Aussie knife, as I like to call it. Yeah, if I was a gangster, that would probably be my name. Box cutter Aussie. It's actually quite a brutal uh, thing. But, uh, if you had one in your car, I mean, the police can't actually say, oh, what you got that for? Yeah, what if I need to uh, do emergency repairs on, uh, you know, the radiator pipes or something, mate? It is a valid excuse for having that kind of thing in your car. So. Maybe not in your uh, front shirt pocket. So we've got the Blues Brothers, I can't read any of the other stuff here because they're so small, the writing on there. I think one is Firelord, but I can only tell that from the, uh, the cover. Uh, and I can't read, it looks like there's a copy of Lemmings on here. Oh whoopee doo, I fucking hate Lemmings. One of the most overhyped games. If, if you're the kind of person who thinks uh, Lemmings is a game that was worth buying a 500 pound Amiga for, actually I think they were 400 quid by then, then uh, yeah good luck to you mate but uh, I don't really want to discuss retro games with you, that's the end of that discussion. And there is no discussion about my review of the uh, Obi-Wan TV show. Obi-Wan Kenobi shit show, that's what it should be called. I could fucking make something like that. Bunch of knobs standing in front of a huge projected screen. Now, uh, whoopee do, mate. You know, I do get loading anxiety with the Amstrad because you can always hear it, that's the thing. So when you get like huge long blank pauses like that, you're like, is it going to load? So yeah, I think uh, we managed to cram in quite a fair bit in this room. So like I said, we can have a uh, Amiga 1000, a C64 and an Amstrad, but I don't think we'll get anything else in there. Uh, unless I bring in another nest table, so all three of them would be fucking up here. Uh, and uh, put the Sony on there, and uh, then the Coleco or the uh, VCS will have to go on the floor. But, number one, fuck knows where all the Coleco power supplies are, and I think I've only got two, I'm not sure I've got three. I've got three Coleco visions, two box, one is quite a nice box actually. Uh, uh, but one is just like unboxed, which I may or may not have bought for, uh, you know, the PSU. Uh, VCS, I really don't know. I know the PSU for the VCS works. I've got a 4 switch Woody, a 6 switch Woody and a Vader VCS, as well as various uh, uh, 2600 juniors and obviously the 7800 so that still works could play 2600 but really I want the 6 switch woody to work so we have to cannibalise one of the others to get that working and that's, that's just how it is mate I had a 6 switch woody and uh, that's the end of that that is Atari for me. I don't want to be fucking about with uh, cheap shit little switches at the back. They've got to be on the front. And they've got to be uh, lovely uh, aluminium turned uh, switches. So, yeah. If you thought all this bullshit, I have to chat while the C64 games are loaded was bad enough. Well, welcome to the uh, world of slow loading Amstrad tape. Like I said, they could have done it a bit better, but uh, yeah, this carpet, they're not, it's a magnet for cat I have to hoover like every two days. 
financial point, I've got to go and see if I can find one more of those uh, uh, add-ons. My mum threw away the, uh, you know, the, the typical, you know, Hoover attachment that you actually used to Hoover the carpet because uh, my mum, I suspect, has uh, OCD cleaning issues. So even when I was a kid, we had to hoover the entire fucking uh, hallway carpet upstairs and downstairs with the, uh, the tiny little uh, thing for uh, you use for basically hoovering up the uh, corners of the uh, wall or the picture rails, that fucking little tube. It was a fucking nightmare, mate. Cause as far as my mum was concerned, the other thing that everyone else uses on the fucking planet didn't do a good enough job. Or maybe you should have got a carpet or a fucking mapping job. Get cheaper carpets, the same colour as fucking uh, specs of fucking bits of material. I don't know, I don't know, mate. Right, yeah, I'll take it away. I don't know, oh, I've got these Amstrad action tapes. Oh, the other thing I found, I found loads of stuff. Uh, I found my Amiga 1200, that's, uh, that's been found now, uh, but I also found uh, one uh, third party Atari ST external disk drive, which may or may not need a PSU, I don't know actually, and uh, three Commodore Amiga one, some of which may have a uh, an ST stroke Amiga selector switch on them, but uh, anyway, this one is mine. I had uh, two external drives, and I think these two on the bottom are mine. So this one's probably for the ST above that, yeah. Oh, man, I'll take these all up. Where's the, uh, where's the box cutter? I am box cutter Aussie after all, mate. Parcel tape is such a cunt. Anyway, one, two. Yeah, so this is a problem now because this needs a power supply. This thing. Famously, the Amiga disk drives don't need a power supply. You might need a new power supply for your Amiga 500 if you have more than two. Amiga can have up to three. But uh, I don't know many games that come on four discs that support multiple drives. Sword of Sedan, it came from the desert. They support two external drives. Well, three, I would imagine. Yeah. Oh, I believe this one is ST in the middle. Oh, it loaded. We're doing really well. Now, Aglan, you can't be eating the uh, parcel tape. That's just really good. So yeah, these are my two drives and uh, a Qmana I've probably bought later, but these are the ones I used in the 80s and early 90s. Magic! And they're not matching, don't be stupid. They're completely different. And uh, I think the Qmana one is ST or anything. There is a switch on it, but there's nothing written on it. Ah, uh, play! The bloody game mad Commodore. Right, here we go. Well, actually, it's not Aslan, it's Jonesy. I keep forgetting Aslan's in the living room. Right? D, 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 D. Screen's a bit small, in it? Speed is a bit. So the graphics are nice. Now to be fair, the C64 version of Buggy Boy is uh, programmed by a bloody genius. Now. Waiting for the football, football in it. So 
So yeah, it is easier than the C64 version because you've got your added reaction time there. So you've got more time to react. I was going to say uh, C64 Buggy Boy was written by the same guy who wrote First Strike, which is a phenomenal afterburner type game engine. Phenomenal, sir. I say, you know, people who say uh, afterburner type games on the C64 are doomed to be as shit as the official conversion. Ah, uh, there you go, mate. Oh, actually, it was I forgot to uh, fucking change gear. You knob! So yeah, it's still a nice game, it's just, if you're used to this version and you play the C64 one, you're going to say the C64 version is too too difficult, and uh, the other way around, if you're used to the C64 version from back then, and you play the Amstrad version, that's about it really. On the C64, Buggy Boy, there are genuine brown trousers moments going on there, mate. Where you shit your pants. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So. No, I didn't want to. Nah. I don't even know why I wanted to get onto that side of the screen. We still have the same problem where, you know, you just can't get out of the way fast enough, really. But Buggy Boy is quite a good 8-bit uh, game actually. My problem with a Spectrum version is your buggy is too big and you can't really see what's coming ahead. So I thought I'd get away with that one. Fantastic it loads. I might have to go and uh, see what Adamski is doing. Alright there Jonesy, alright mate? I had a dream that uh, Jonesy had blood coming out of his nose yesterday. Alright buddy. You liking the uh, retro 8 bit, 16 bit nest or the new room, eh? Yeah, of course you are, buddy. Alright, that's enough uh, bullshit for you guys. Dead channel and all that shit.